On first line days, it's a great time to dig into the details, get into the foundation of things. And where the core essence of the sun is, is in a gate that is called grace. This is the grace of social interaction, openness, or maybe not, to being able to hear truth over time. This is biologically the left ear in our design. So if you have this, then you have a planetary imprinting in your design that lends you to hearing truth from other people depending on your mood, depending on the wave that you're in, you know, the availability to hear them or not, hearing what people want. And the fear that arises here is, you know, maybe there's fear that nobody will pay attention to what you have to say or that there's no one worth listening to. So that's the thing that is creating the 70% of the neutrino stream that's bombarding all of us right now is that gate of grace. And this is about, remember, this is part of a stream of awareness. Anytime we see pressure to throat going through an awareness gate, we have a availability of energy along somewhere along that stream. So I said that this is the left ear, here we have the right ear, here we have the inner ear. And the gate 22 lends us to being, having the possible expression of our spirit, our emotional spirit. So generally, what you might find with this thematic is that people are gonna wanna listen to you or not this week, depending on what mood they're in. And this is a very deeply powerful, impactful area of the body graph, a strength or a channel that lends itself to mutating, impacting the collective world at large. The collective world at large is available to being mutated, mutated but depending on the emotional spirit of that person's mutation. So when we come to realizations of the emotional spirit within, we have the potential of the possible expression of that spirit out into the world. So that's what I want to uh, give to you guys as a thing to watch for this week. You know, we have the gate of realizing, that is where we are grounding this light, and that core essence of the light that's shining in the gate of grace is about realizing about past experiences, what makes sense, Life feeling very heavy, oppressive, potentially futile when you think about to the past experience where you had all these emotional um, potential you know, woundings. A lot of times we remember the things that really pained us or touched us very deeply, either on the happy or the very dark side. The dark side tends to be remembered more because we as humans are genetically designed to avoid pain and to move towards pleasure. So if we can remember the pain, we're more likely to avoid it in the future. It's just a consequence of what it is to be human. So that's the thematic of what we're looking at today as far as the individual mutative energy here that is about being social or not and then grounding that in the past experience that gives us a realization or recognition of what makes sense when it comes to recollecting, rehashing, you know, going over things in your design. So back to what you can use, if you've got a 64, you've got now the whole channel of abstraction in your design this week because, you know, it's about a week that these energies stay with us. And if you have a 12, then you have the whole channel of um, openness, a design of social or an antisocial being. So those are th two things to watch out for. If you do not have a solar plexus in your design defined, what you might notice is that, let's see, where is this coming from? 49 in Mercury and the 19 in Saturn. Ooh, and there's second line, so they're resonant lines. We have a potential for the emotional sensitivities to be called out of us, meaning when we have this particular channel, design of um, channel of synthesis, design of being sensitive, there's a potential for us to get triggered. And sometimes, you know, you get a little trigger or like a splinter. I got a splinter this morning <laughs> underneath the skin. And it just, it can, it can dig deeper and it can fester. And then down the road, you just, ooh, trigger. 
That's what this emotional wave is like. So it builds and builds and builds, and then it needs some kind of expression. And here, that expression is usually going to come up out here. It, down here, they're so sensitive, you might keep it inside. You might need to have um, some time to get really, really sad and to allow the energy to move through you. Allow the energy to move through water because we are all mostly water and we process emotions through water. Hi, crying. This is the channel of what my friend Sammy calls the waterworks. So that's something that you might also notice in your life, especially if you have an undefined solar plexus. You're more sensitive to being conditioned by the transits potentially. This is what is in the weather for this week. You know, your communication and thinking potentially about the um, principles, possible, sorry, potential awareness of what principles to accept or reject in relevance to what it is that we need to provide for our tribe, what we need, everybody Need, everybody's needs being equal. What do we need to provide or what do potentially we need from others? So that's, it's about the tribal rules and laws and needs of being able to have territory and resources and food and such. Okay, now another, that was a global conditioning pattern, by the way, that's consistently turning on the solar plexus end, that's 22 right now. We also have the 58 and where is that coming from? Moon, so this will be passing um, very shortly since it's in the fifth line. The moon is the conscious driving force in your design. In the um, transits, it's about being focused on wanting to correct and perfect. So it's the pressure to correct. The pressure to want to improve life, not for the specific other, but for all of humanity. And what else do I want to tell you about? It's a love gate. Love you know, wanting to create a more perfect love. So it's also a very yummy energy that it's about vitality and potentially um, at its foundation, the joy of living a life that's physical and shared with other people. So those are the thematics here. Now, if you don't have a root center defined and you are amplifying this energy, again, you're potentially gonna have the pressure to um, the waterworks to express emotions to you know allow those energies remember to allow energies to flow don't judge them yeah let it flow um, but the pressure over here now if you have an 18 and you have an undefined solar uh, splenic center the splenic center then is going to get turned on and what is the fear here we're going to be amplifying fear of authority so standing up to authority or not standing up to authority you know the primary authorities in our, our life are figure, father figures, mother figures, you know, the um, judges and the police officers and the uh, school teachers, whoever it is that you look up to as an authority figure, there might be an exacerbation or an amplification of that fear because if the uh, splenic center is being turned on and that is your conditioning receptor or the hook that feeds into what this is like for you, then that's going to be potentially on your mind, weighing on your mind. Now, where else do we want to go? Let's see here. I'm feeling a little disjointed. I'll tell you a story why. As I was driving here to work, um, I, I have about a half an hour commute. And on my way into work, I could see there was this, there's this long stretch on the freeway, two way, two, sorry, it's two ways. And there's a divider in the middle and there's two lanes. And I'm driving in the fast lane behind two more cars, you know, the standard distance, we're going like 75 miles an hour, 70, 75. And there's this giant semi truck I can see way far away and he's got his blinker on as I get closer and closer and closer. He starts to pull out into <laughs> the, the, the road, like the highway. And I'm, I'm panicking because I'm going too fast to slow down if he's really go intending to go across in front of me and uh, the, the space in front of me is getting narrower and narrower and narrower. And so I decide to, to, to step on the gas. I step on the gas, I swerve around him, and then he just backs up. So he wasn't even going across the street. He was just coming out and backing up. I have no idea why. But anyway, I'm not as on as I'd like to be. And the mind always judges that. You know, the mind, conditioned thinking mind, thinks that you know, if you, if, you, if you have your survival fears triggered, and I got a lot of survival fears there, 
Um, what tends to happen is your cognition doesn't have the availability to really think clearly. And that same thing can happen over here when you're em really emotional. You know that term seeing red or when you're really sad? It's like your ability to communicate isn't necessarily there anymore. So just letting you know where I'm at. Um, now, since we're talking about mind, how about we go up here and talk about the other channel that is a global conditioning pattern. When you see a channel in the design, it means that everybody on this planet is going to be amplifying that in some way. Now, some of us, like myself, might have one side of the channel or the other. Some people might already have the channel, so it's an additional layering on of that energy. You might be totally open here. So if you're totally open here, you're going to be, and particularly if you've undefined head and undefined ashna, what the mind is going to be potentially doing is spinning its wheels over and over again into the same thought process. This is the loudest internal mind that we have that's really busy and it's always thinking about the same thing over and over, like a dog worrying at a bone. And what it's trying to figure out, here we have Pluto, our truth transformation and psychology in our design. It's trying to bring us to a truth. Pluto mutates a gate every time it goes through a gate. So it's mutating our availability to be inspired by the pressures of life's existence. Big Y in the sky, I like to call it. The 24 is coming from Uranus, which recently, I think it was last week, Monday, that it went in here. And this is a gate that is about migraines or headaches. It really can um, give you a headache if you're trying to think about the same thing over and over and over to figure it out inside of your head. And particularly if you're trying to use this energy to figure out stuff inside of your head about yourself, really challenging. So when there's a thematic like this, a global conditioning pattern, long-term transit, because these are very long-term energies. Hey, Pluto and Uranus move very, 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 very slowly. And if you were watching transits last year, you saw that we had a long time of this. This can lead to people not being able to sleep at night. We have the pineal gland biologically and we have the pituitaries here. So if you're having trouble sleeping because you're trying to figure out stuff, just get up, turn the light on. I personally have a red light in my lamp side table by my bed so that I don't get blue light into my eyes late at night and have a notebook and a piece, piece of paper or um, pen or whatever, whatever you like to write with, and just write that stuff down because your mind's going to keep cycling, trying to figure out and resolve life's questions and make sense of to the effect of wanting to understand the mysteries of life and wanting to um, get over your fears of not knowing the answer, the fear of ignorance, you know, trying to get to the bottom of that. And yet, knowing that there is something out there more than we can ever comprehend. Have you guys had that experience? I remember, <laughs> here's my little story. I remember when I was about, I don't know, 11 or something, having this experience where I'm, um, maybe the TV was, I don't think the TV was on, but I was in my living room and nobody else was around and I'm in the recliner and I have this experience of complete, utter blackness, darkness, nothingness, this, this just complete, absence of being and it scared the daylights out of me it scared the shit out of me to have like this complete utter nothingness for that moment that i was contemplating it and that changed the way that i around that time was when i started reading all the books on my mom's shelves edgar casey and all of these different esoteric things to try and understand what life was about so this is the mysteries of life of wanting to know the unknowable is that pressure so if you're trying to figure out the unknowable and you don't have any consistent high mental thought processes it can drive you crazy it can literally drive you crazy this gate um raw says is one of the gates that really leads to madness and it can lead to ringing in the ears as well. I noticed a lot of people on Facebook, oh, I've got lots of ringing in my ears. Hi, there's why. Because there's this sound. This is the processing up here. This beautiful area of the body graph where we turn light into sound eventually. This, this is not a sound that you can hear outside. This is an internal sound up here. So the metamorphic gates literally do that for us to create language 
you know that's this whole process here so anyway there's there's gonna be a lot of jibber jabber in your mind trying to say the same thing over and over and over figure things out and that's just part of the movie now what else is going on up here is the doubt after completion the gate of doubt we have venus there so venus is our values and relating it's bringing our mores our morals our standards for relating and so we can see that this is about that niggling question the experience that i'm realizing about in the past that i'm really confused about is it going to happen again doubt the pressure of doubt trying to ask questions as a as far as what's going to happen this is about what happened over here what's going to happen and what the freak is happening right now so we have a lot of mental pressure long story short long story short if you have an undefined head center then you want to be aware that you're being conditioned by the pressure to try and make uh, sense, logic of what you know. And there's this um, mental dilemma that most of us in this world are living up in our heads. We're not actually paying attention to what is happening in the body. And this is gonna exacerbate that problem, whether you're defined or not. So if you're undefined, you're trying to answer everybody else's questions and you're losing focus. If you're undefined, you're trying to pretend that you're certain of what you're certain of, whatever it is that you happen to be pondering. This is the design of a thinker. Channel of awareness, design of a thinker. I like to think of that you know, statue where the guy's just sitting there pondering things away. This is a lot of pondering. If I, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, that one is, you know, lots of mental pressure. Okay, so let's talk about all these other open areas of the body graph. And let's, let's dive in here. I mentioned this last week or whenever it is that I mentioned that these gates moved. So we have progress, the gate of progress, the gate that says I feel, and then we also have waiting, gate of fixed patterns. So these are our nodal environment. Nodes always move very slowly backwards. So it's something that to get really familiar with. The gate says, I'm bored, I want a new experience and I have fixed rituals and routines that are correct for me. So the way that you're looking, you're framing your view is going to be about the experience potentially that you want to have that you're maybe impatient about having or maybe you're able to wait, depends on you and your design. Um, I have gate five a couple times in my design waiting, you know, in the not self couldn't wait for worth a shit <laughs> because there was all this um, pressure to be spontaneous, me being a broad split and having undefined sacral and splenic center. But what you might see in this environment is a lot of people talking about waiting, but not being able to wait. Like just, it's all about this, this movement of wanting to have experience and the logic of what you, you know, your, your, your patterns or your cycles are. I remember telling my husband this morning, oh God, Lavina, really? Okay. I remember telling my husband, hey, it's spring <laughs> because spring is normally when, you know, the spring time of, um, you know, and mating energy of, of getting together. And last year I was really, really sick. Um, I had COVID or something to that effect. It really, really felt like, um, and a whole, all the symptoms and everything. So it was for a really long time. Didn't have get to have, and plus we were in a very small um, town home with other people and our rooms were very far away from each other. Anyway, it was just, we didn't get to have our springtime like we did um, for most of the every past nine, 10 years. And this year I'm like, ooh, yay, maybe, you know, that the, the rhythms of life, the cycles, and, and patterns of life is part of what is potentially on your mind right now. Okay, I won't go any, any more into that. So let's take a look at what else you've got going on here. Let's start with the throat. And if you do not have a defined throat center, but if you do have a 36 or a 12 or a 57 or a 33, what might happen is now all of that pressure to try and speak it's being the floodgates are open and now you're trying to attract attention to something that perhaps isn't a recognition, invitation, asking, what have you, or initiation from outside world. So when you have an undefined throat center, you have an inconsistent metamorphic process. Natural state is more to be on the quiet side rather than the high, you know, bubbly talking all the time side. 
We have a defined throat center. There's a consistent way of speaking or communicating. Undefined, inconsistent. So when it gets turned on, now there's all this pressure to communicate. So just to be aware, if these are not your voices, the I feel, the I am, and you've got these other sides of the channel and you start to hear yourself talking with those voices, please don't make any decisions because of what you hear yourself say. Always come back home to your decision-making strategy, whether that be emotional um, clarity, or whether that be your response in the moment, or whether that be your intuitive, instinctive awareness, your um, ego or your willpower, or your process of your G-center, your identity, love, and direction spoken in the now. And that, that wouldn't be you if you have an undefined throat. And if you are a mental projector, really be patient. Most problematic thing I see with mental projectors is they don't give themselves the time, themselves the time to process their authority and soundboard with other people in the environment. And then of course are reflectors who need a lot of time to process things. So uh, over the month, the lunar cycle. The other thing I didn't mention, I did mention briefly, this was the um, hearing of truth in the now, if you've got that gate, I like to call it like a, a bullshit detector or a lightning bolt of truth because it gives you an awareness to hear through acoustic knowing, a body sensation, whether somebody an, is speaking truth or not, like their, their frequency feels off, the sound, because it's very, very much attuned to the body sensation as the sound hits your body, you can feel it inside of your body, resonate or not. And the fear that arises here is the fear of what tomorrow may bring. So this gate 20, where is it coming from? Ah, Mars. <laughs> Our mutative energetic impulse that is very immature. Okay, there's an immature energy dynamic here with the Mars, wherever you see Mars. It's kind of like a bull in a china shop. It just <laughs> it doesn't have any finesse, you know? It's not refined, it's very young. Think teenager, think this powerful energy. And so if you've got a 57, this channel right here is brainwave and my husband has it. It's about penetrating awareness in the now. So your penetrating awareness in the now, now has a voice and now has this voice of I am. I also hear him say the word intention a lot, you know, this intention, tension of this inner knowing that's now bursting to be expressed. So. If this center is undefined, then just be wary not to make decisions out of fear of what tomorrow may, may bring. Always come back home to your own authority, my friends. Now, we're gonna go to the G center. G center being the home of our higher self, our identity, love, and direction. Hello, my friend, there's Jupiter. <laughs> Expansiveness in our secret telling, hey? This is the energy, gate, gate of secrets. Um, that is receiving from others. So if you've got a 13 in your design, this gate of the uh, listener, you have a very specific way that you listen to people's stories or secrets. I have a 33 on the other side, so what I find is that people with 13s tend to tell their secrets to me, and then I learn from those um, secrets that they, they share. I hold those secrets pretty darn well, especially now at my age, you know, 44. I got my age wrong of like last week or the week before. I'm not 43, it's 44 um, because I just had a birthday. And what tends to happen here is this is our genetic role in listening to others. And because there's an imprint here, it's bringing a rule or in our own design, it's our own law and protection, but the transits are bringing in a rule of being able to pay attention to those secrets. And when you've got a 33 in your design, hi, I notice I tend to tell stories at my storytelling gate. There's a couple of them in the design. It really gets activated when that 13 comes in. So if you're in an undefined state here in the G center, so you have an inconsistent sense of identity, direction, and love, and you've got a 33 on the other side, what may tend to happen now, this is the prodigal design of a witness. It's an abstract part of the um, sensing, it's a sensing circuit abstract, as far as its frequency is concerned, collective, so sharing, and it's part of the memory circuit and it's the expression of our memory, you know? So what tends to happen in the not self is that the 13 
will be the tattletale and tell on others the secrets. So if you find yourself now starting to share secrets, just remember um, to do it in alignment with your strategy and authority and specific people about specific secrets about specific people. Do your best to try and keep it to what's relevant and on topic. Um, best with the gate 33 to remember collectively what is in general important for us to share and the lessons of the past not the specific he did this and she did that and i mean that might be in your design but um it's just what i've learned from experience um <laughs> tattletale you know kind of energy there be very careful with that and what can tend to happen if you're an undefined in the G Center, the identity, love, and direction now being defined about the past experience. Now you might say, oh, because this happened, now I'm going to go in this direction. And maybe you do it spontaneously rather than waiting for your emotional authority to be clear. So be very careful about the voice of I remember and whatever secrets get unearthed this week. I found myself just speaking on social media about a secret that I hold, held very, very dearly for about the first five years in my experiment. Um, it just, you know, commented on one of somebody's posts, like, oh, yeah, I don't care anymore. And I'm hopeful that that's coming from a place of, yeah, really, I don't care anymore. And not that it's going to come back and bite me at the butt. You never know. Okay, so we're at about half an hour. I want to make sure that I cover everything that I wanted to cover to you. And then open it up if you need any questions. Let's see. Neptune, I didn't mention Neptune is adding to that. So let's add that in. The gate of grace, you know, it's harmonic gate being gate 12. The gate of grace brings us an availability. Remember that this with the Neptune is about art, illusion, spirituality in your own design. Now what the transit is bringing in is a level of misinformation potentially misinformation about being open or closed to hearing what the other person is really trying to say um, my personal take on this is let's see fourth and one so it's harmonic I keep having this memory might be the transits but you know over the years as I teach these classes I've done my freaking best that I can with this what I think inside of my head as a feeble mind um, to be available to others to hear what they really want and are asking and to deliver on whatever it is that they need to know in that moment and uh, I can feel that I'm emotional so this might be important the energetics of being present and available to hearing what other people want it really, it really has to do with the alignment of you yourself to your own inner spirit. Because if you can get yourself out of the way, hi, I'm a projector. <laughs> I, it's easier for me to get myself out of the way, especially now that I've had the deconditioning process. In the beginning of the human design experiment, could not get myself out of the way worth a damn because I was always, I'm a personal perspective person, I was always taking them in from the perspective that was skewed, which is, you know, what's going to win, what's going to lose? How is this going to give me the advantage if I can advise them in a way that's going to ensure my own safety security? If, especially if they were a person that was really close to me, so it wasn't like a client. You know, it's really easy to be detached with a client, but with your personal friends, family members, lovers, this is where I really started to see it, was when I just it entered into the experiment, my teacher at that time, who was my um, analyst, Becky Markley, she said she even with a defined throat just stopped initiating conversation period. I did the same thing. And when I stopped initiating conversation, the voice inside of the head got louder because it was trying, it really wanted to share stuff. And here, remember this is hearing over time, hearing in the, yes, it's the individuality. So there's always this vacillation for individuals, nothing, 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 nothing. And then there's an energetic pulse up or down. And it has to do with the spirit that's available that arises from within. So abundance being strictly a question of spirit, our available potential. Here now is the possible expression, which I noticed that the transits are bringing to us right now, the, the, the possibilities of the expression of being able to be available 
to really hear what people want. So I guess that that's my um, attunement now is just recognizing if I can be, so the mind is always judging, not good enough, but you know, I do the best that I can with what I have. I can remember going through, I think it was 2019 when I was really having trouble with my brain, um, having all of these health issues and uh, my husband going through my classes and saying, hey, did you know that she was asking this and you were answering that? And I could hear that there was a disconnect between what I'm saying to try and resolve the question versus what they really want to know. So I used to blame it just on my unconscious gate nine, which is about detail mercury. Um, first line for me, focus on little details. So I usually have to give a lot of backstory, as you've noticed in my um, teachings and classes and such, and like I'm doing now. And now I'm wondering if it's maybe the inconsistencies of not having the gate 22. So either being able to be on it with hearing what people want or not. With this imprinting, of the transits, what I'm, what I'm going to ask you guys to pay attention to and let me know if you notice is, are you recognizing that you have more availability to tune into what other people want? Remember, transits are not who you are. It's not your life. The program is not your life. However, with awareness, now you can recognize things that potentially you hadn't before because Whenever we're looking at our design, we have a conscious and an unconscious and we have openness. So if you have openness here as I do, I want to invite you to let me know if you notice that you can hear maybe potentially what people are really asking for, what they really want. Okay, that's my final word on that. So the last place I want to take you is the heart center. Oh, our poor, fragile little ego. Now, this is interesting. We don't have any activations within the channels at all right now. So we're getting a little break from the transits that puts pressure, especially on those of us with an undefined heart. Um, so when you see this in somebody's design, that total openness like that, that bright, area of vulnerability. It means that there's potentially a very strong swing between the extreme spectrums of being um, egoistic or not, um, pressured to prove or not, not knowing what is valuable or knowing what is valuable, you know, self-esteem issues or not. So there's always this vast stream of or spectrum of experience that can happen with a totally open heart center. So, or any center, really.